Okay, folks, uh, basically going to be chatting with some people in the future. I've got some people that have been on YouTube for quite a while, and they're kind of well-known. And we're going to start mixing a lot of this stuff together, I believe, because I'm going to put some invitations out to talk about CPM, RADs, and get everything together like a snowball with the objects in space and these close flybys. And, yes, we always know cry wolf, cry wolf, and then all of a sudden then the little piglet gets ate by the big bad wolf, okay? So the idea that we know by some experts that the idea that we are overdue on Earth for past. Now, I pray like anybody else would be that the idea that whatever fell into the Gulf of Mexico and other places in history on the face of the Earth that we know that we have indentations and that are not volcano old beds, that we know that something hit Earth, just like we can see objects that have hit planets and also the moon, okay? The idea that hopefully this is all safe stuff. Uh, but we're going to have a lot of discussion in the future and so forth about this stuff. And the idea that, like, I keep, like, trying to show stuff is, hey, this stuff's hella far away. But as we eyeball stuff, and yes, eyeball will look closer than what actual distances are, okay? But... Let's go to some fireball stuff on the last video that I showed you that I didn't get to. Idea. Let's go to the close one, and also I'll bring up the picture of the page that I took the other day because they refreshed their page and showed some new information that actually helped me show you that the idea that the moon was not down at the Antarctic and other stuff that everybody keeps on trying to say, the, like a radar dome and all this other stuff. Okay. And also, here's some great pictures first. Okay, people, folks, uh, you can go back, and there we go. And we've already showed in my past videos, you go back two videos and you'll see the idea that we show that this drops in front of the sun. Okay, now this is a different location. And also I'll try to fit in at the end here that the idea, and see, we're getting even more proof now because it's the idea that what's in front of the sun is putting this off, okay? And also putting this off, okay? And we're also getting these color tones of the tetrahydrons or whatever people want to call them, it's just my lingo, at the idea that we are getting the nice little anomalies, and those are not photo flares, folks. Those are colors that are getting put off by chemicals and reactions and the idea of stars and asteroids that are close to Earth. As you can see, dark, then we get this crystallization. Now, if anybody's ever been to snow, I mean, I'm blue-eyed, blonde, I got Nordic in me, I've skied, I snowmobile. Uh, I've been around snow, I was raised in the snow area, and even back up hanging out in the snow area these days for the holidays, and so forth and so on. So this is not crystallization. This is asteroid belt showing up, reflecting on dark area on Earth in Antarctica. That is not uh, crystallization in a camera, folks. And I've showed you that in my past video, and then you'll see these stars move here through these videos. I mean, through these sh shots of the video. And you can go down to Palau and we'll check this footage out. Just as astonishing as the action at Hawaii, i.e., this is more than likely, until somebody can prove me wrong, the thing that's getting in front of Rigel Canteris B, because that's not the sun, folks, that's Rigel Canteris B. And it's part of the reason of what probably been studied for years of the idea of why do we get 23 to 24 hours of daylight in the fall, in the fall solstice, and in the wintertime, okay, down there. Maybe scientists have known about it for years and never really explained it to all to us, okay? Because this stuff is coming up at, yes, folks, that gets close to the sunrise at 5 UTC, but that's gone. Goodbye, 528, then the sun comes up, okay? Bam, there you go. Okay, now that's not directly in time because I was taking these pictures to show you something that the idea that, okay, we are going to be on our object in space. Okay, you've got this, and you can go to the video and watch that. I.e., these glares now are showing that that nominally that everybody says that the camera's doing is a bunch of bunk. Everybody in the military knows what that means. It's BS. You know what BS is? It's bullshit. Yeah. In case the kids are watching this, because I hope some of the small kids are watching and seeing what's going on that you're probably never going to live through and see again, ever again, okay? Because this stuff is happening in our time clock in space, and it's astounding, and we should be watching it. Now, there you go, and I'm not sure if I had the one, but there will be a picture, and in the last, in, at the end of the last video today, I showed you the idea that that black blotch that comes up there. Let's back up and see if I get that real fast. Or did I screw up and that's farther forward? But you will see the blotch come up. There it is. So this comes into a focus at 1110 UTC, GMT Zulu time, folks. 
Okay, then it moves along and it comes toward us. It's not a radar dome. Uh uh, the radar dome is up there, ladies and gentlemen. And when I get people to get me disinfo right away, then I know that it's some kind of some operative bullshit government this that or whatever world stocks world commodities and everything people worry about now there's going to be some commodity guys go go Bino, go you know scare the shit out of people i am not trying to scare the people in the world not i don't want to know anything about that crap okay disclosure Bino's just showing you data and facts and pictures what's out there what people don't tell you why are not scientists not telling us about this? Oh, yeah, radar dome with points on it. That's kind of like that little jagged part that I told you guys a long time ago about. Now, the one thing is, is to realize that when the Chinese satellite went up there and gave us a truthful shot, it looks, it sure the hell seems like. Go back and see my exposure on that. Check my videos out. There is, on the bright object, there is like a ka-chunk like that. Okay? And also the idea that the object that is burning is not Mars, like I've had people try to tell me, okay? And radar domes have don't have curves like that, okay? It ain't no damn radar dome. This thing comes by at, well, let's watch the clock. I'm not even going to misquote myself, okay? So it comes by there, and i.e. those photos I just showed you of the idea that were fresh from last night. You got to watch it. Basically, it's pretty easy to watch because even West Coast time, you're going to have an easy time of watching it. You can sit there and watch this stuff going on down in plow. Now, they were out plowing around. And basically, I don't know if they're trying to disinfo us and not let us see the shadows on the ground. It sure seems kind of like that. That's what's up, guys. Come on. Don't like and don't be doing that down there, guys. Come on, my German buddies down there. Uh, this stuff sure looks like the hell that either that or they're trying to help it for i'm looking at maybe they're maybe they're trying to do those tracks to sh judge some distance okay but they're running around and then you get tracks okay and it's not their that their, their equipment is not that's what i'm pissed off about is their equipment is not making this shadow okay and then the, uh, the idea at the last video i showed you this here creeping up of some more stuff around the 1900 hour and stuff like that okay now is that and it looks like way more if you watch the shadows it looks like more than one object it looks like two ovals there okay so there's lots enough uh getting to be new angles of stuff and you know it just makes common sense the solstice is moving objects are moving in space and the idea we're going to get different angles and different shadows and the idea the last video i showed you as i will reappropriate the uh object that is on the side of the container from the same area that we looked at before from down at the other there we go there it is i was able to get to it fast there you go and there's a later shot here that i've got of it to, there it is that's still it there so and it so it moves within the 205 hour to the 130 hour and before that it was there one shot before that so you can watch that video and just go to davis station australia antarctic division research that this video should still be up there Either that or the next current video will be up there. And more than likely in the same time frame, you're going to end up seeing this. And it's not the moon. It's not the sun. It is whatever the hell it is down there. And basically more than likely, it's something that's in front of Rigel Canteris B. Because at 2.30 in a.m., the sun's not up. I mean, the sun's not that bright. And also, yeah, also here at this, I didn't get this in the last one, the Squire Island Station. It also shows up on the ground, a shadow, okay, of whatever the hell that dark object is that keeps coming up. There it is on the ground. Can't miss it. There it is. Comes over, gets dark, and then back. And then this is the other shot at uh, Moss and Station. And like I say at Moss and Station, like my last video before that, is the idea of watch the sky. It's just basically you can see the asteroid belt or the constellation that's close. And it basically probably the asteroid belt is coming by. You can see it high in the sky there. Okay, this is basically an well, old shot. Miles will explain this real fast. The idea of Fox, and basically I'm not going to say anything more. And the idea that, I have my disclaimers, so the idea that is that or was that the Virgin trying to dock on the space station a long time ago, or was it debris? Okay. Uh, I contend that hopefully that it was, which would not be good either, but that it was basically probably debris from the uh, supergiants. Okay, either that or it's space debris, or it could be one of those floppers that I also show you and freeze in my China video, the video that I brought the China f uh, footage forward, where we're showing the baby blue Kachina, and there's a flopper that we can end up freezing coming through there. So the idea, there's debris in space, and the supergiants is in the sun's in the supergiants, and there's the shadow. There it is on the ground, and then it gets bigger. 
there's where it starts on the ground at Mammoth, a Marquis st Island Station. Sorry, folks. Okay, so that comes over there, and then the ID of the asteroid belt is pretty much can be seen up there. And there is the Davis Station, and the other stuff is at Palau. And let's go to Fireball because we had the day ago of them showing you this stuff, and I got the data on that real fast. Okay, data on the 18th, there was a close object of, like I was saying, the 0 0.087 IU. There's the time in the data. Don't have time to spooch through all the data. You can freeze it and read it. Okay, then there was the object that I'm going to tell you that, like I was saying, it's 900 and something IU that was out that was real bright, and then basically I think that's the picture there, and we're going to go to Fireball and see anyway. Let's go to Fireball. There's the data, 929. Otherwise, that was the closest one to 8. And I'll flash through this down real fast with the data, so the idea you got that real fast, you could freeze it and look at this stuff real fast. And I'll go back up, and the idea that that 8, 0 0.087 was the closest thing, so the idea, and then we got that object that I showed you in the last video, and you go to my, uh, it'll make you go to my channel, and you'll see there's a close object coming by on the 20th. And what's a little disturbing is space science ain't telling you about it anymore. And it is on our RSOE, and then you can do a JPL search of it, okay? So we got cousins of this stuff coming close to us, okay, already, even early. And the idea that this is out of LEO, they say, okay, so that's hella close to Earth for being out of LEO. And the idea that in the uh, this uh, space uh, weather, let's see if it okay. The aurora today, folks. So on the north pole, the center is over here in the static going through space. So it shows you where the pole magnetism is. It's pretty much morally right dead center here, not where it should be. Okay, we're going to show you some pictures real fast of yesterday, but the first today, the the, the bottom, the pole. So the center is about there and should be over here. And they're also giving you the, these direction lines. Now let's look at the photos. Okay, I remember I think I've showed you this previously of the 19th and also earlier the, of like I think the 15th. So and I'm also going to show you an update, the idea that it's even farther, a little bit more. This is front view of the sun and that's going to be shown to the left and the idea that someone was trying to blow smoke. And now this is that, almost that big, okay, all that crap. So the idea someone was trying to bullshit the idea of the mercury. Okay, this is yesterday's aurora and the idea that check this out. These was what was confusing is the idea that these were both off at the same doggone time. Okay, the south and the north. So we've got some interesting magnetical because the idea that then that means we have had the equalization almost of our coronal retina or whatever you would pretty much call it going through space and the static electricity on the top and the bottom. And the idea that yesterday we had a hell of a pull, okay? And then because those last two shots I just showed you uh, were from yesterday, okay? I mean, these here are from yesterday and the other two were from today, okay? Those other two just before these were from today. So you get an idea of how much the Earth is actually doing more than just rotation. And we, on average, usually Earth goes through the uh, space It's over 60,000 miles an hour. Okay, this is the 19th, so this is the idea that this is what uh, GMT time, so that's what uh, arced over last night in this night sky, okay? Doesn't really matter if it's Arizona, it doesn't matter, it's North America, okay? These are the items here that went over, and the idea they had a lot of clouds over there in Huntsville. And the idea that here we keep going, you can count, don't have time to count these right now on video time, and let's move down. And so we got a lot of action, and the idea, remember, they're showing out a Leo, but the idea that, remember, when they don't say Leo, they don't know where it's coming from, and then they have to research, and they don't do it right away. So if they don't mention it coming out of Leo, like that one there, this one here, that's not out of Leo, that close object, that close comet, okay? And yes, pretty good sized comets, but the one that's pretty big, and wow, that's one that's pretty big, so let's check this out, hang on. So IE on the 17th, I gave you a close IU, but this one here that's got a big head on it, and then the other one we're going to go back to that was way far away, this had a close IU. Yeah, so this big-headed one had close IU, but it's still three IUs. That's still quite a ways away, okay? And the idea, uh, duh, it's not the moon, it's not the sun, or Cantaris B more than likely lighten up the night sky, and there's some common action, but check the one out on the 17th that well, I'm telling you that basically the idea that I'm going to pull that up, and that was like 900 and some odd IU, and not the close, that 10.08 something that I showed you just a little bit earlier on the data, the close one is the idea that there was one also out of Leono, Leonotus, you know, the, Le, yeah, the Leo, the lion. Uh, let's go to the 17th. Yeah, so just like space weather, folks, this thing was big, bright, big-ass long tail. Uh, and uh, the idea that astronomers are not calling me up and telling me I'm full of bunk, only this info people, because the idea all this Rigel Cantaris B Keep watching, legal disclaimer.